time here. Sorry I was not available the past day or so. I was working on some other things. I do have other things to work on too. I am currently making a song with somebody. So, we shall release it when we are done. I'm not even close to done now, so just, just wait. But anyway, we're playing Tiny Bunny again. It's very loud, the most real dog. So I was here. Alright, yeah, the police were here last time. Um, missing boy, we saw them things out in the woods. We're Anton. We got a little sister Olya. We got the mom. Looks like Lara Croft. And we got the dad that's just weird. <laughs> out of place. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But anyway, um, I think we're religious. Um, it meant that the argument was over and mom had the last word. Who's covered over here? Oh my god, I can't actually, <laughs> I didn't know I could do this. I'm so excited to get to the part of the game. What is this? Hmm? Dang. I can't shut it off now. This cross had seen so many people come and go in this house. It was black as if it absorbed all human sin from the long years it was hanging under the ceiling. At least it's not upside down, am I right? After Grandma died, Mom was going to take it off and hang a horseshoe in its place as a lucky charm. I had that done as a kid. I had that done. I had done that as a kid. Uh... But she cut herself with the cross's sharp corner and almost fell off the stepladder. Dad called it a sign from above and ordered the cross to be left alone in its rightful place. We have the phone. My parents prohibit me from making long distance calls, but time to time I really want to hear my old friends. Sometimes I would just pick up the phone, listen to the low hum, hum of the zoomer and the distant crackling, imagining the wind howling and the ice leading cold. Ice leading cold. Okay. Courts. This kid is out of his goddamn mind. Um, I don't want to go anywhere. Uh, so this must be like a hint. This mom's peg top, a family relic. Mom played with it when she was little, and then she gifted it to me. Olya was next in the succession line. The toy belonged to her now. Egg top. Some kind of top, I guess. She stared at the dancing spindle as if it could show her something. A fairy tale, or maybe even her own future. Now even my little sister was a bit too old for the old squeaky peg top. I'm gonna open this. Dark, stuffy closet. Mom says it smells like mice. But how would she know their smell? How do you know what frickin' the phone static sounds like winds of Earth's past? So, what are you saying? How does she know? I mean, come on. <clears throat> We've all been in a pet store. <laughs> you know that chip smell, the wood chips and the little mices and the hamsters. They have a certain smell. She hates when I stick my nose in there. She's afraid I'll cut myself on the freshly sharpened axe, and Olya can't even be lured close to it. She thinks Babai lives in there. It's, it makes it constantly is hard for me not to say Bye -bye. but you know, Babai sounds creepier. Um, I tried to help her fight her fears once. I opened the door and turned on the dim lamp so she would see there was nothing but cobwebs, dad's tools, and scratched walls. She still didn't believe me, and I like to hide in the closet and listen to all you count outside. <laughs> One, two, three, better hide from me. And then drag her feet on the creaking floorboards, hoping she wouldn't need to look for me in the cramped monster's den. Wait, but can I look at the axe? <laughs> Anton, get your ass out of the closet immediately! Oh, is she gonna get mad if I keep doing it? Probably not. Okay. So, was that it? Yeah, I got the top. I got all this shizwiz. I can go to the front yard and kitchen. I'll go outside in a minute. There's my hot mom, Jace. Talk about a milf. It looks like me in a way. If she, like, parted her hair over a little bit more and it was blue. Um. The decrepit and stain covered calendar was once my favorite form of entertainment in Grandma's house. 
I remember waking up and running to the kitchen so I could tear off yesterday's leaf first thing in the morning, as if the coming day would get lost in the taiga forest without my help. One day closer to New Year's, one day closer to Grandma's funeral. I haven't touched this calendar for years now. It's stuck on the 7th. Since the time they started writing dark and spooky death chants that only made me gloomy instead of funny proverbs and superstitions to be exact, grabbed a dusty- oh, he tore it off, it's eight. She's just standing there like, thousand yard stare right there. She's had some PTSD. I grabbed a dusty calendar leaf with caution and tore it off effortlessly. Sadly, the spooky descriptions from my childhood were still there. Seven horses carry the log. If seven can't carry, burn the eighth from a fairy. Hmm. Can we song this up? <clears throat> Let's see. If seven horses carry the log. If seven can't carry, burn the eighth from a fairy. They will take it away and never come back. That is the fate that the log can't escape. <laughs> He's like, garbage! <laughs> garbage singing! <clears throat> I crumpled the gray leaf and threw it into the waste bin, hoping to get rid of the anxiousness that washed over me. That was my song. He heard it in his head. She heard it too, and she's like, uh... I'm stuck forever. It was actually a paralysis spell, so good luck for the next 50 years, lady. It was spreading inside me like an ink stain on blotting paper. God, did freaking like George R. R. Martin write this? Does this little kid grow up to be the writer of Game of Thrones? Because, I mean, jeez, <laughs> y'all read that, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> um, radio. Emmerkam of Russia has, oh, so it's Russia, has declared, I think I knew it was Russia, and I said that earlier, I'm an idiot, has declared a state of emergency due to adverse weather conditions. Is that like every day there? According to the weather forecast, a cyclone is moving toward the region. Expect heavy snowfall, blizzards, and snow drifts on the road. Is that a cyclone is? I thought a cyclone was like... A whirlwind. I thought they mostly happened as dust cyclones, like in like Australia and shit, but okay. Is it like a snow tornado? Keep your eyes open and take care of yourself. Took a peek at mom's crossword. She would get very angry when someone gave her advice. So me and dad fake knowing the answer and being about to reveal it all the time. I smiled at that fleeting thought. Vertical, nine letters, the name of the Philistine deity that protected them from microbites and had the nickname the Lord of the Flies. Second letter is E. Hmm. You know what? That is gonna fuck with me. Because I know I watched a movie where they were talking about it wasn't a deity, but it was a demon. And he was the like commander of the flies. But this is saying deity. So, is it going to say the same thing? Yeah. <clears throat> the side of an old ocean freezer was checkered with my childish drawings, mom's recipes, and all kinds of stickers from bubblegum with dinosaurs and Olya like so much. I love dinosaurs as a kid, so I love Olya even more. Olya is my girl. Here's a pony. Uh, among that still life picture hung a piece of ruled paper with the phone number of the police officer who visited us. First Lieutenant Tikhonov. Tikhonov. Uh, Tikhonov. Uh, I read inside my mind, looking at the officer's sprawling handwriting, a scrap of paper was held by two pieces of a broken magnet from some old Soviet toy, and those pieces just barely covered up the numbers as if to taunt me. You're 12, can't you like move them? It's like two something of something. Um, what about the rest of this? I leaned toward it to unveil the mystery and take the piece to a safer place where it would wait for its time, and I'd finally find my Vova and be the first to call the police with the happy news. Not his Vova. That's sketchy as hell. <laughs> Just say, I'm glad I didn't mess that up, because it could have been worse. 
Oh yeah, he's talking about the missing boy. Anton! Mom's reproachful eyes stared at me. What do you need it for? Hands off. You'll lose it. Angry my mom was the last thing I wanted, so I lowered my hand. Is that all we get from up here? Of course it won't be that easy. Oh, okay. Look at my mom. It was difficult to lie to mom, but there's no other way for me to run away from home. Mom, something's wrong with the TV. The picture is dim and there's stripes all over the screen. Her face became visibly distorted. It looks normal. They're all aliens because they don't blink. Ah, uh, you're killing me here! So, have you had enough of shooting those stupid ducks now? Told you the kinesc kinescope will go dim because of your console. Where will we find a TV technician in this hole, huh? Maybe it's just the settings? Please, go see for yourself. Range, it worked fine in the morning. Maybe the snowfall caused it. <clears throat> Mom rubbed her hands clean on her apron and went to Oya's room. There was a TV in Oya's room. Oh. Wait. Meat bits for soup and a pack of... Pelmini. What the hell is this? No one gonna tell me what this is? Hey! Something, something, mom. Uh, something, Lorda doll? Um. What about this? Is it down here? Huh, weird. Let me make sure I got them all. Yeah, I got them all. <clears throat> so I got the kitchen, I got there. Is she gonna yell at me now? <laughs> she's upstairs! How she's know when I'm opening the door? Jeez Louise, go to the front yard. <laughs> I opened the front gate and went into the field. <clears throat> oh, that's not like a weird face to anybody else. Wow, look at the animation of these birds. That was some wind. Okay. Um. Carefully, so Mom wouldn't see me from the window. When I crossed half the distance toward the forest, the snow piles became high as my knees. I remembered my nightly fears. I saw those silhouettes around here. They were jumping around holding hands. That hypnotizing music started playing in my head all on its own. In the light of the day, those distant figures felt like a simple dream. Sun turned my nightmares to ash, but the aftertaste was still there. Distant ringing in my ears, distorted shadows crawling on the snow beside me. Or these as little feet prints. And they had a pretty nice house. And a barely audible whisper in my head, blurry and almost kind. What the hell is that? I'm always looking for shit that's not right. Everything was silent. So silent, I felt like the world was totally empty. No ground, no sky, no parents, no Olya. Time reached its limit. A one-way trip that ended at the forest, piney stockade. Oh, here's some little feety prints. Sometimes silence was much scarier than any scream. And you know that snow. <clears throat> Man, wintertime around here where I am, everything. I get all four seasons. <laughs> so, uh, winter time around here, we can get some bad snows, and you walk out in the forest, it just hushes everything, and I love that about snow. I love it, I love it, I love it. And I don't care what anyone says, I like eating snow. So, booyah. Obviously, I, do, I eat snow that's untouched in the middle of the woods or whatever the hell, but, you know. Sometimes silence was much scarier than any scream. Our parents would scream at each other while arguing, and both me and Olya turned to stone, listening to them. But then always came the ringing silence. Our out apartment, our apartment became a numb, became numb a couple of days before we departed. It was hard to remember the last time mom and dad joked around, laughing, or spent time together. Almost like all of it was in a previous life. When they kissed with Olya present, she always frowned and snorted in a funny way. 
But one day it all changed. Something important had left our home. Well, that's sad. And something scary filled the remaining void. Yeah. I, I can I can relate a little bit. It was as if a fire broke up and our parents were hurriedly packing our belongings, trying to save themselves and us. From who though? From the people with the dead cold eyes who sometimes visited us in our previous home? What? Does no one mentioned this before? What the hell are you talking about, dude? The eyes that only saw balls of worms on the black ground and everything? So kind of grandma? And somewhere far away a siren was going off, trying to warn us of the coming menace. Oh, he is kind of cute. He kind of looks a little bit like Ganta, with like a little Harry Potter thrown in there. He got his thick little glasses and a little... Nyapt. Reminds me of Nyaki. I love Nyaki. I, I want some Nyaki right now! Oh my god! I shuddered, chasing away my delusions, and looked around. Because I am Polish and Czech. So, you know I love me some Nyaki. I'm a little bit Russian. Uh, I don't know any Russian though, so don't ask me about it. I know some Holoski, some Holoki. I know getting whoopies <laughs> because man, the holy wooden spoon, if you're as bad as a kid. There were only me, this white field, and the wind that was whipping up icy dust and belts of powdered snow. Don't notice anything weird in the background. I wish you quit staring at me like that. Jeez, freaking me out. It's all up in my face. I squinted from the sun and I turned my eyes to the sunless forest looked especially dark in contrast to the blinding whiteness. I get snow blind really bad. I don't know about anybody else, but if I'm outside in snow, my eyes are really sensitive. Um, I have usually green eyes, so for the most part they're always green, sometimes a lighter like bluish green, but they're really sensitive. Bright lights kill me, so snow really messes me up. Um, if I look at it too much, then I go blind for like a minute or something. <sighs> Knobby tree roots slithered under the snow like fat snakes. What I had dreamed about last night, snakes, especially uh, like a hundred foot anaconda. I was somehow in the wild west, but there was anacondas, I don't know. I have crazy dreams. Uh, rotten leaves and coniferous needles froze into the ice. Ooh, here's a glove. Look at that. Were they- oh, sorry. I don't know if I can go back. If I go back, what's this gonna do? Okay. Dry prickly branches in the pine and then you go to the fences. Okay. Were they protecting the forest, or were they keeping something from breaking out? Some object is hanging from one of the pointy branches. I wanna make sure there's no faces up in here. Cause you know they be hiding them faces in the trees. If I miss one, I'm gonna feel like a real idiot. <laughs> this looks like a nut sack, but okay. Um. Oh, you got that glove. I tried to get closer, drowning in snow. <clears throat> when I almost got to the edge of the forest, I saw a knitted mitten. It looked like a wounded bird among the hungering semi-dark. Poor Jar Martin, come on! Get out of here. He just doesn't want us to know he wrote this. Did I take it to the police? Yeah. Their senior officer looked gloomy, but he still reminded me of Captain Casanova from my favorite... Aw, Casanova reminds me of Casher and Sims from my favorite TV show called The Streets of Broken Lights. He was also always anxious with a tired look in his eyes, but still brave and strong. Dude, you gotta learn to move. I know, it's just an art. Come on, though. But he's like two feet from home! I thought he was like really going somewhere. He's two feet from home, the policemen were just there and they didn't see this frickin' mitten? Will this mitten help them find the lost boy? Boba! Oh no, that's him yelling, Boba! I heard a distant shout, looked like it came from the river. I thought it was a ghost again. <laughs> Boba! As if the trees were calling out to someone. Boba! Or sounded closer to me. Someone was standing there behind the trees, hiding. Boba! 
kitty, stop staring at me, I'm pitch black room, <laughs> and I got a kitty crawling around back here, I knew someone was looking for the lost boy, but still, do we see him? I don't think I see him anywhere, something was unsettling about that figure, where, where's the figure, am I blind? <laughs> I don't see anything. I don't see anything. Am I really that blind? I'm about to look like an idiot to everybody. It's stillness, how it was bent unnaturally toward the ground. What? Blackness? There's no one there, just branches and roots. It's all just my imagination. Yeah, it the fuck it is. I didn't see shit. Um, nothing behind him either. A nearby bird flapped its wings loudly. That was a dude walking that way. It wasn't a bird. A shadow split from the tree and disappeared from my sight. He's chasing Bigfoot, or Yeti, I guess, considering where he is. What if that was, like, the final plot? <laughs> That'd be great. I looked away for just a moment, but, I, but when I turned my gaze back to the same place, it was gone. <laughs> It was my imagination after all. He's looking at me like, help me, bitch. Sorry, I can't help you. Silence reigned for a painfully long time, just like my eyeballs in this dark room with this bright-ass screen. Do you see anything? There's a glove. My muscles were tightly sprung. My heart was beating somewhere in my throat. I still don't see anything. Any noise, little movement, small whisper in the thicket, and I'd sprint. But nothing of the sort happened. Look at the mitten once more. R oh, run away. I'll take it. It's just... I decided to take the lonely mitten from the branch. Don't take it anymore! What the- Boba! It's probably normal people, though. I don't know why they're dancing around like that. A shout rumbled across the field and dissolved into the distance. No echo, no hope for a reply. I stepped towards the bristly trees and I tried to calm my mind. It didn't budge. I pulled hard at the branch cracked and the mitten tore off, landing in my hand with a squishy sound. All too heavy, wet. I squeezed it without thinking, and something... I love that as well. And something dark spilled from it, forming a tiny string between the mitten and the snow. Steam rose from the snow pile. Was it covered in blood? It was filled with blood, wasn't it? Studying my palms in disgust. Red. The sound of crackling branches invaded the silence. I didn't have time. I didn't have to think twice before running away. I'm doing well. Someone's chasing me from the darkness, breaking pine branches, poisoning the distant with giant leaves. Oh my god, that's like when you're going somewhere creepy at night, and like all you have left to do is like go up the stairs, like in your house, everything's dark, you feel like something's chasing you. And you're like, not, you're not ready to look back, but you're just running for no damn reason at all. I can't imagine if I heard noise with that, too. I would lose my damn mind. The snow was slowing me down. Crazy thoughts. Crazy thoughts flew from my mind. Yeah. I'll get caught. They'll get me. I'll get dragged in the thicket. I'll be gone forever. But there was one more voice. Probably one of reason. It gave me strength. and spurred me on. Well, look at this little homemade hat. You can do it! Don't stop! I heard an animal roar behind me. It was so loud, my ears went numb. Like when you get that, something happens and your ears, like, ring. I felt, it felt like the sound had come from a patch of hungry beast rather than just a single one. He's wrong. Their nostrils sucked in freezing air and they sensed my fear. Two giant wings flapped above my head. An enormous shadow flew over the clearing. A hoot. A wheeze. The roars were coming from all directions now. He's like five feet from home, though. From the dried up raspberry bush, from the twisted pines, from under the windfall. 
Hurry, run, don't look back! It felt like I was inside a nightmare. The, slow, the snowy clearing becoming a... Coming came viscous like quicksand. I was stuck in place. I pulled my leg from the mushy trap just to be caught in a new one, even deeper than before. Oh no! It's like the never-ending story in the horse! Don't give up! Come on! I tried to dra drown, sinking. I continued to drown. I didn't try to drown. I continued to drown, sinking deeper and deeper with every desperate push. Was the snow ever this sticky? I screamed in horror after realizing it wasn't snow. Somewhere or something in this snow plow was clutching my pants. One sec. Dang! Sorry, you're 12. Um, I'm gonna shut the fuck up. I gathered all my strength and rushed forward. The pressure on my legs was gone, my boots slipped out of the hole, and, this, and my soles were on a hard surface again. I reached a clear path with one dump and from there, ran to my house, which was five feet away this whole time. But, you know, plot. This gloomy fat cave didn't look threatening now. The house was in my, was my line of defense. Sorry, I can't read it today. I've been reading all day online. <sighs> the house is my line of defense from the shadows that flap their wings and the creatures that were hidden under the snow. These birds don't look concerned at all. I like this. Oh, damn it, stop it! Damn it. I tripped over the doorstep and smashed into the door. Yeah. I wouldn't even bother opening it. I just break through the wall. I Kool-Aid man in there. <laughs> oh yeah! In all my hurry, I still managed to notice the claw marks. As if a dog was striking the wood with its paws, demanding to be let in so it could escape the cold. I hadn't noticed these marks when I was leaving. My heartbeat in my ears was much louder than my surroundings. I couldn't hear whether someone was following me or not. But what if they were already in our front yard and Mom had locked the door? Drowning in fear, I pulled on the doorknob and it obediently gave way. I rolled into the hallway and shut the door behind me. Porch planks creaked as my pursuers ascended the stairs. They got a pee-pee hole? Look out the pee-pee hole. That doesn't sound very good. I don't call it a pee-pee hole. I call it the peep hole, not a pee-pee hole. I'm sorry. Uh, my fingers slipped off the lock, and I couldn't click it into place. I gritted my teeth and pulled hard on the iron knob, whipping it between the boards. I stared blankly at the door. Someone was standing on the other side of the pitiful, flimsy barrier that was probably less useful than blankets. Leasing breath reached into the house and crashed at me in waves. I smelled of pine and sweat. Mom peeked out of the kitchen and chastised me with the same frigid voice she always used when talking to my dad. What exactly didn't you understand when I told you never to slam the door? I, I didn't mean to. I'd have been like, Mom! Holy fuck, there's monsters. I'm sorry. Just fucking monsters. Outside, right now. Lock the doors, shut the windows. I'd be closing the curtains. I'd be barricading that shit. All that's moved in front of the door. I, I'd look in that pee hole. I mean, pee hole. <laughs> I'd look in that pee hole, though. I'd be scary as hell though to look in that people. I snuck a glance at the door. The smell was gone. The breath was too. If someone was there in the first place, if, if there was someone in the first place, of course. Here, mere five meters away from my mom, my fear was slowly weakening, melting like snow in spring, and with it, the last bit of strength I had left my body too. Oh, well, there's mama. My legs gave way, I propped myself against the wall so I wouldn't fall over. Her expression changed immediately. Oh, she's concerned now. <clears throat> Cold mask, strictness, and detachment was gone. Mom looked the same as before all those quarrels. Finally saw my condition, my wet pants plastered with snow. Would he piss himself? Where have you been? What did I tell you, huh? I told you to stay home. Am I nothing to you, too? I got afraid she would cry. I reached out to her like when I was very little and I wanted her to cuddle me. Aww. My mom regained her composure fast and put on her usual face. Her eyes shined like steel. Her voice rang out. Really? I thought I was going to say something else, but okay. Your dad can't find his cigarettes. 
be honest. Did you snatch them? Were you smoking in secret? Uh, I, the, there was someone chasing me. I, I thought I stuttered as soon as I started explaining myself. This is me right now. Tears welled up in my eyes. Mom leaned toward me and sniffed my clothes like a beast, searching for the smell of tobacco. I do that a lot, but I don't check people for tobacco. I sniff the air because I know that when you flare your nostrils, you can smell like freaking 20% better and I can smell shit coming like, like nobody's business. <laughs> that sounds weird, but it does work. I promise you. If you can flare your nostrils, try and smell something before and after. It's amazing. Then she squinted her eyes in suspicion and looked into the front yard. Ooh. Her expression changed in an instant. She covered her mouth with her hand. Look, over there at the fence! My heart started thumping as if I became prey once again and my pursuers were following me in the field. I could swear that I heard something scratch at the door, just like in my nightmare. Mom beckoned me with her finger and I gathered all my remaining bravery to look into the kitchen window, facing my fear. I was just wolves. And a dog? Okay, that, these look like dogs. And these are wolves. I could barely discern some hairy silhouettes swimming in the snow through the icy winter patterns on the glass. Dogs! I guess they all are dogs. That looks like a freaking, I don't know. It's half Labrador and then half Husky? This looks like a weird something or other. And that looks like a freaking Cocker Spaniel Husky mix. This one kind of looks like a wolf, that's about it. Just a small pack of strays with no name and owner, barely reminding of the hungry monsters that live on the edge of the forest. Oh boy, were you scared of them? I think they'd be scared of you, Anton. And they were chasing me like a bunny. And what is their rabbit? The smile slowly disappeared from her face. Now she looked at the dogs as if it was her first time seeing them. What if they attack Olya? Mom, I wish your dad could just shoot them all. Mom, look, they're alive! Huh? What? Are they your friend or foe after all? Make up your mind. You're not a little kid anymore. Mom sighed in annoyance and I felt so bitter that I bit my lower lip and fixed my gaze on the cobweb-ridden corner. Well, some detective I am. What about the bloody glove? Um... If it fits, you must convict, am I right? In reality, I wasn't risking my life among monsters, but rather my pants among a pack of stupid strays. Okay, a pack of stray dogs can beat your ass. I had a dog that was 120 pounds once. Nicest dog ever. For some odd reason, though, if I wore a scarf, he, it just one time, because I knew what happened, he attacked, he jumped up, tried to bite my neck, and when I realized he wasn't stopping, I mean, this dog was trained to jump through blue hoops I held up, I held my arm out, I bent over, he jumped over my back, trained perfectly. You know, Labrador German Shepherd mix, great dog, never mean, never bit anyone in his life. So I wore a scarf one day, and he tried to rip my throat out. He jumped up the second time, and I mean, I thought I was going to die, and that was one dog. So, a pack of stray dogs isn't losing your pants to them. Because, let me tell you, just one dog is going to kill a 12 year old. And what for? Especially some Russian, like, super dogs. Anything that can live out there is, like, freaking gigantico. Monstrous. I mean, those are harsh conditions. And what for? What use do I have for this, Mitten? Of course! A dark and sticky mitten that belonged to the Lost Boy made a squishy sound in my hand. Seems like I was clutching it the whole time. That's my trump card as a detective. I hurried to present this clue to my mom. Mom, look, this is Rova's mitten. That boy the police were asking about in the morning. It's drenched in blood. I found it hanging on a tree. I can show you where. Let's call the police right away, like the officer told us to. Mom, look. Ew. Shadow of doubt crept in her contorted face as she was trying to remember something distant. 
Like someone tries to remember their dream, but the image slips away. I she pissed. Stop it this moment. Oya will go insane if she hears you. She already has trouble sleeping and whines all the time. Yeah, because she's a child, you dumb bitch. And you joke around like this? I mean, what, she doesn't realize it's not his mitten? Oh. <laughs> I should have read that first. At that moment, I realized the mitten was actually wet from snow. There was no blood whatsoever. So see, I told you, this kid's not right in the head. He's schizophrenic. Something's going on. He killed the boy. Problem solved. It's all over. I wanted to sink through the floor from embarrassment. Come here, my boy who cried wolf. Uh, don't just stand there. Come take your pills. A golden colored pill reminiscent of a dead wasp fell in my palm. I already took one during breakfast. Don't talk over me. Told you to stay home, and you... Dad would have given you a good whipping for that. Come on, take it, or you won't be able to sleep at night, and you have school tomorrow. So I had to swallow the bitter medicine, drinking it down with similarly awful water that gave off the taste of chlorine. And maybe it wasn't Bova's mitten, maybe it wasn't a mitten at all. Just like the forest monsters and Olia's owl. Am I going mad? What's happening to me? Either the pill had an immediate effect, or my overexerted brain didn't let fear inside anymore. Serenity washed over me, bringing a yawning indifference along with it. Anton, you done? See, you can do any try. <laughs> Such a bitch. Take off your coat. Are you asleep? No, Mom, I was just thinking. What about, I wonder? It's just something silly. Mom scrutinized me with suspicious eyes. Oh, damn. But well, that ain't right, dude. As if she wasn't sure she was looking at her own son and not some doppelganger that came from the forest. Is everything alright? You had the exact same expression when the policeman asked you about the window. I'm alright, Mom. She heaved a deep sigh. <sighs> Fine. And then she vanishes like a ghost. Woo. I had a pen in my hand. I meant to do this, but... <laughs> it seemed like the house had changed. The sofa's fabric became discolored. Fingerprints appeared on the bathroom tiles. Light bulbs also felt different, dimmer, and yellower. Even the saliva inside my mouth had a different taste. A melody from Aladdin could be heard from the upper floor. Right, of Aladdin. All you has done, ain't never had a friend like Dean. Can your friend do this? Can your friend do that? Can your friend pull this? Out of the little hat? Can your friend come ever to death? Alakazam, and then makes like it is up here. Oya was done rewatching her favorite Little Mermaid episodes and switched to other tapes. I slowly changed in my home clothes, stopped before the sink, and studied my reflection in the mirror. That's a bad idea if you're taking medication, because let me tell you, one time I was taking anti anxiety medication, and when I looked in the mirror, my pupils were like, whew, and I freaked the fuck out. <laughs> I was like scared of water. Yeah. Some are just, some medications are just not for me. <laughs> like I was trying to solve one of those spot the difference puzzles. Yeah, that's not a good idea either. He's definitely insane. But he has kitty cat drawings, so it's plus one for him. Castle drawing, also plus one. Airplane, plus one. Cactus, plus one. Dinosaur, plus one. Art supplies, plus one. He got plus freaking five million for... Then I went upstairs. Jafar and Iago's voices died down. I walked past Oya's bedroom and slipped into my own. Hmm. Okay, well. Oh my god, this bitch is behind the curtain! I should have left it there. I'm actually going to leave it there. So, don't hate me. <laughs> um, but I do have to go. I wonder if I can turn the lights out first. Nope, I can't. But, uh, she's definitely gonna scare the shit out of him. And so, tune in next week. Next week. <laughs> yeah, I'm a weekly show. Tune in next week. I have a pen. Uh, but yeah. Tune in next time. 
maybe tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, and you will get to have some spooky. So, I'm gonna go, and I'll see you all later, and if no one told you this today, I love you, and I hope you have a good day. Bye!